dream about what you would like to create and let yourself explore this path. What's happening is you're actually getting in contact with your own higher spiritual self. And what's actually opening is, is your third eye is opening. So in your questioning of what should I do, you're actually connecting to your third eye and connecting to your spiritual purpose. Oh. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the first great week of 2017. We have Mercury Direct. The sun is manifesting in the mid-degrees of Taurus. A full moon in Scorpio will pollinate your intentions, and a north node moves in a Leo for the first time since 1998. From my smartphone to yours, keep streaming for your weekly Namaste Today. Hello and welcome to Namaste Today, a cheerful way to begin your day. I'm your heartfelt host and the Sensei to Serious Joy, Christopher Wateki. Welcome back, my friend. Namaste. Well, I think this is going to be a fabulous week, and I'm not just saying that because it's my birthday on Tuesday. Woot, woot. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Turning 44, quantum, quantum if you want to know. But I think actually the universe has given me a wonderful gift. The planets are moving forward in such a wonderful way. This is probably the first great week of 2017. And I don't even think the weeks so far in 2017 have been good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so this is the first great week. And there's a lot of reasons why. We're manifesting in Taurus. We're very fertile right now due to the other planets. You're launching a new version of yourself and of your strength. We're going to be uniting Saturn and Uranus, which means we're going to have harmony between two planets. They usually give us a lot of hell. And what excites me the most is that the North Node is moving into Leo for the first time since 1998, which means God is pointing towards some love. So in today's Zodiac weather, I'm going to talk about your five-day mood cast. We're going to go into your segment this week where I'll walk you through the whole week. And then later in your tea time, I'm going to help each of the 12 signs understand how the North Node and Leo will help them. But first, let's take a look at the week's moods and your five-day Zodiac weather. This Zodiac weather is from Monday, May 8th to Friday, May 12th, 2017. Looking at your five-day mood cast. Well, looking at the week in a glance, the two intense days are Wednesday, the full moon, and Friday when things go quantum. Let's drill down. On Monday, it's sunny and shifting as you decide and commit what you want to manifest. On Tuesday, you're sunny and manifesting, which means you're holding space and the sun starts to try in Pluto. On Wednesday, it's cloudy and passionate for the full moon, where things will reach an apex and create a turning point. On Thursday, it's sunny and hopeful as you wake up to Saturn trining Uranus. And on Friday, it's sunny evolving at step 22 as life starts to now go quantum. Well, this week is the first week things really take off. In our next episode this week, I'm going to walk you through the week and talk about the full moon. Taking a peek at the upcoming week, I coined this week Reality Blooms. That's because I believe a lot of our manifestations will start to come into a little bit of preliminary harvest. And you're going to start to see a lot of your stories coming together as well. So I would say 2017 so far has been extremely fragmented. We've been fragmented inside from faith and strength and direction. So much uncertainty. And this is the first week where you're going to start to see everything gel together and begin to get an idea of what this picture looks like. Now, looking at the week kind of emotionally, we start with the moon in Libra on Monday. So Monday is a, a lot of balancing. And then the moon goes full in Scorpio. And so your emotions are going to end up polarizing through the week. That's what this full moon is. Your emotions will be on one side about one thing and one side, uh, you know, on the other. You know, you literally will split, which means you'll be able to draw boundaries because your emotions are polarized. And it's that boundary drawing that's really necessary for you to um, really kind of package what you want to manifest and send it off to the universe to have happen. And that's kind of what happens on Friday. So we do a lot of polarization with the moon in Scorpio. 
Then the moon moves into Sag, and we start to focus, and then it's launch time. And on Friday, step 22 rules the day, so things start to go quantum. But things are even more intense than that, because on the full moon, the north node moves into Leo. Step 29 Leo, which is the highest degree of Leo. So this is a huge um, aspecting or energy pointing is what the North Node is. I think the universe is saying, okay, point it all in this direction, all right? <laughs> like all this stuff going on, point it in this direction. And it's pointing into Leo, which means it's pointing into love, our highest good. And it's also very, very fertile when it happens to be pointing into Leo as well. So we got a lot of great things happening. And then we also, I have to throw out, we have Saturn and Uranus starting to trine up now. And that means that this hard part of figuring out what we believe and what our story is, and this other hard part of trying to figure out who we are and where we're supposed to go, these two start to uh, sync up, basically. And so you start to get clarity on where your story is going and who you are, and of course, manifesting as well. So let's talk you through the week. Um, it's going to be a fun week, and I'm grateful. And it is my birthday Tuesday. I'm super excited. So thank you ahead for anyone that says happy birthday. I'll just say that right now. I think it's wonderful the universe gave this to us. On Monday, um, it's actually my astrological birthday on Monday. I'm a step 18 Taurus. So your astrological birthday and your calendar date birthday actually shift around. So step 18, Monday, things move forward. You decide and commit to go in a certain direction. It's kind of you'll you'll feel like you have... Uh, the energy to do it. The moon just crossed uh, a major yacht over Sunday and Saturday, and so there is this new understanding of balance and harmony, a new definition of it. So Monday, it's like, okay, let's get going. Let's make this happen. So you decide and act on Monday, probably for uh, to manifest something in your life. This could be a home, a car, you know, a partner, you know, a new house, you know, I mean, a new location, lo relocating. I mean, anything under the sun anything, even especially stuff inside you, like you want to manifest peace, etc. On Tuesday, we actually do the manifesting. So we kind of pull the gears on Tuesday. And interesting thing about Tuesday is Black Lilith goes into step nine on Tuesday, which means we start dealing with our fears about taking action. And when we're dealing with that tells me that we're going to be taking action. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we're dealing with fears around taking action. And the moon starts to move into Scorpio at this point. And so as we move forward, there is a bit of a divide. So it's kind of like you have to leave something behind by moving forward or you start to see one era is over because you're planting seeds to a new era. And this is the beginning of the full moon of this emotional uh, divide that's happening inside of us. And I would say it's the old life and the new life. That's in simplicity the divide. But in this particular year, with all the planets and everything that's going on, this is a huge shift. This is a huge shift. And we'll talk more about that in tea time uh, to give you some scale. So Tuesday, um, your manifesting is pretty good. Keep things going. Wednesday, I think it's overcast. It's step 20, this full moon. So step 20 is a emotionally delicate step. People feel vulnerable. And because it's Scorpio, you might feel really vulnerable. It can go either way. It's a full moon in Scorpio, which means it's trying to bring out boundaries and define boundaries, okay? But it's a step 20 day, which means you may begin the day not really feeling the boundaries. So you go through this process of kind of panicking and having to reinforce and make sure you're okay. Having it at step 20 means that what you're feeling is going to be what manifests, what you're feeling, step 2, 20. So... Um, if you want to be conscientious in a like, you know, uh, in a ceremony or whatnot, a release ceremony, it's like be conscientious that what you are feeling is more important uh, than what you are thinking or in visualizing, etc. Okay, and this full moon also is fascinating because Mercury conjuncts Uranus on this full moon, and the North Node. Uh, moves into Leo. So the universe is saying pointing to love. This is the first time the universe has pointed to love. Uh, well, it's been in Virgo for 18 months now, okay? And it's been, uh, hasn't been in Leo for 18 years. That's how it kind of works. So this is a very big deal and a big shift of energy. And this full moon basically means um, our feelings will get very divided about something, which will allow our heart to commit to one direction or one manifestation or the best path. And that's what the full moon's meant to do. A lot of people get into arguments, especially romantic situations, with a full moon in Scorpio. Because the truth comes out. Okay, and it's just, and once it's out, it's out. You know how that is with Scorpio. It can never go uh, be undone. <laughs> That's the boundary. And really, it's about, you know, in some cases, it's about you have two things harvesting in your life and you need to focus on one. It's not even a bad thing that happens, but you put in that emotional divide. 
Uh, Thursday, things are sunny and hopeful. We move to step 21 when it starts to get fun. We also have the moon uh, move into Sag during that day. And so we move out of that Scorpio intensity and into Sag optimism. So this is like the new seed of hope after we've, uh, you know, been clear on what will manifest and not manifest. Um, and at this point, Uranus is starting to try and Saturn. And we'll continue to try and Saturn. They're within orb now, which means now we start to accelerate our personal growth. Uranus and Aries for our strength, Saturn and Sag for the story we're born to live. Saturn is retrograde, though. And then Friday, we step 22 rules the day. Step 22 is a quantum step. So it's almost like the full moon is some sort of, some sort of turning point on Wednesday. And then on Friday, the consequences of that tr turning point kind of like kaboom they just skyrocket and i have to you know really reinforce that emotions are very very important the moon is also going to be um working through sag which means as we go quantum and we feel our lives take off in a certain direction or whatnot a lot of it is in harmony with our feelings about the story we were born to live and that's what we're working up to in fact on saturday it's pretty serious the moon crosses saturn and we kind of realize life has changed Things are changing. So Saturday is a real head trip that way. And Sunday is going to be really grounded. So this week is really about, uh, you know, seeing reality bloom and choosing what part of reality we want to hold on to, what part we don't want to hold on to. And then the part we hold on to, it's time for that to take off and let's run. So that brings me to our next topic, which I think is a fascinating one. The North Node in Leo. Go steep yourself some tea and let's have our weekly tea time. <laughs> Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is North Node in Love. The North Node is moving into Leo this week, and this is very exciting, mostly because I remember the last time the North Node was in Leo, it was 1998. In fact, it was from October 1998 to April 2000. I don't know if you remember that time, but we were going through a dot-com boom at the time. Uh, we were worried about Y2K and everything shutting down at the stroke of midnight on the year 2000, right? But everybody was partying like it was 1999. <laughs> you know I mean? like, and that vibe was definitely in the air. I certainly remember it. And I also remember it was a difficult time, too. In fact, when the North Node was in Leo, this is the time that taught me uh, to follow my heart. That's when I really started to realize the universe is based on love and based on our heart. And I had some very difficult times during this period, too, I have to say. Um, in fact, actually, it started with a, a good time. I got promoted right away. As soon as the North Node went to Leo, I got promoted to directing a show on Lifetime TV for Women. So I got this like major promotion, which is what my heart always wanted, was to direct at that time. So my heart's wishes were being fulfilled. But also... I was in a marriage uh, with someone that I wasn't in love with, and the marriage fell apart. So wherever my heart wasn't authentic, those situations fell apart. So it was very difficult and heartbreaking in some regards because I loved her, of course, but I was learning the distinctions of what my heart really wanted. And I remember months after realizing, you know, my heart wasn't happy in that situation. It really wasn't. So it was a real wake-up call for me. I also discovered uh, the internet during that time and working for the internet, discovered new things that my heart enjoyed. And because the North Node, is, I have a Leo rising, this was a time for me when I really began to shine for the first time, where I started to feel like uh, I could be a player in a situation. And actually, back then, it was television, and then it was a dot-com situation. But right after, um, right after my ex-wife and I split, my heart went through real hardship. I mean, I had to... I had to basically get to the truth of what my heart wanted. Um, I was living on couches for like four or five months in that interim. That was extremely hard. But looking back, had I just listened to my heart the entire time, things would have been a lot easier. In fact, it seemed like everything my heart wanted was coming into play. In fact, coming into play to show me what my heart really wanted. So I kind of got blindsided by my own uh, loving truth. So this is, a, I think, going to be a positive time for everybody. But wherever your heart is not authentic, wherever, uh, whatever your heart is not in, these things do tend to collapse very quickly uh, with the North Node in Leo. That's because the South Node is in Aquarius, so it's time to move on from places we don't belong.
basically. So I thought that I would help everyone uh, by going down the 12 signs today and talking about where this north node is going to be uh, pointing you in what direction. And right now the north node is actually grand trining with Saturn and Uranus. So I look at a north node as an imaginary spot that we're getting pulled to. Whenever you can populate that with love, you'll see this grand trine light up here in the next couple of weeks. Like, So whenever you hit the note, it lights up whenever you hit the node. It's not like a planet that's always forcing the node. It's an invisible spot, the north node. So um, I thought I would tell you where the north node is hitting and how this ties into um, uh, your how this ties into your Uranus, basically, what Uranus is working on for you. Uranus has been innovating our characters and pushing us forward, and a lot of what we're realizing this week is who we are and what we want to become, and we're going to start to head towards committing to who we are and who we want to become, and who we are and who we want to become is very much tied into this North Node Leo direction, particularly now. The last thing I'll say before I go through all 12 signs is keep an eye out on on President Trump right now because his north node is 29 degrees Leo. What that means is the north node is going to be conjuncting his ascendant directly. That tends to be a time when people do big things, okay? When people take important actions. In the highest good of good, uh, he'll be doing things that is good for in love and good things for what his heart wants to accomplish, things that his ego wants and the highest good of his ego at the same time. But on the other side, having all this energy pointing towards his ascendant also says that his ego could go too far very easily, you know, especially if he's not in his heart. Right, So he's learning that lesson too. Just want to put that out there. But I think this is going to be pretty warm for most people through the summer. And this is going to be what we kind of focus on until the solar eclipse on October, uh, August 21st. And on August 21st, we get this big solar eclipse at 28 degrees, which really kind of gives a magnificent booster shot into the direction of where Leo is pointing. All right, so starting with the Aries, the North Node now moves into your fifth house, which is love affairs, okay? So you are now working on love affairs. You're going to be working on things that your heart wants. Because you're an Aries purebred, you represent what everyone is doing, and that's why you're kind of first to be there because you get right to it, right to the heart of the matter, okay? And how this ties into with Uranus is it ties into your new character, all right? You've been working on this new character for a long time. Pardon the airplane. Just going to roll with it here. You've been working on this new character for a long time now, and whatever your heart wants, this is the cherry on top. This is what helps define your character. Taurus, uh, basically, uh, North Node Leo is pointing to a new emotional security, a new, a new castle, basically. Tauruses have Leos in the fourth house. And this ties into the new faith you've been building for a long time. So, uh, you will have your new faith directly ties into your new security and feeling more at home. I lost my home the last time and got a new one. It was kind of interesting and ended up in a great situation, by the way, in the end, <laughs> just to say as a fellow Taurus. Gemini, North Node is pointing towards your creative ideas. This is where Gemini minds are going to start to take off and be extremely creative. And your mind will be loving, which means you will be feeling loving and you'll be feeling the love vibrations. And this is, again, going to happen for 18 months, this North Node Leo. Um, and where this ties into is your new social belonging. So I think you're going to find a place in society that you actually love and love talking about and love thinking about. Cancers, the North Node points towards your money and soul capital and manifestation. So the universe is saying, okay, you're, it's time to put your time to make money from what you love, basically, for cancers. And this will tie in, ironically, to your future and your legacy. So you're going to uh, value what you actually love, which will move you along your, your career. They go together. The Leos, who are highly affected, all right, and Leo Risings, this is going to point for, to your shining. So it's time for Leos to love themselves, do what they do best, do what they love. And in many ways, you are examples during this 18-month period for other people by seeing you light up and seeing your heart light up. So Leos are a big example. And what this ties into is your ninth house, which is your life purpose. So by shining bright in the next 18 months, Leo, you will find your life purpose. The Virgos, you are actually, uh, North Node points to a new faith. And you might think right off the bat, oh, faith, that's what I get for Christmas is faith. <laughs> like, but no, no, when a Virgo who is crazy critical all the time suddenly has faith, 
that is like Willy Wonka tour, okay? Like, it's gigantic. So the Virgos will have a new faith inside, and this ties in to a new trust in yourself. And this new faith and trust, I think this gives you the courage to go for something your heart really wants. The Libras, the North Node points towards your social success. So Libras are going to come out and have a shining period. They're going to be shiny pennies. They're going to be well-known. They're going to probably create new communities, new groups. You know, they bring people together. And this ties into their new approach on marriages and relationships. So it's also possible that Libras will get married to someone that brings in this whole like spot life of a social life as well. The Scorpios, I'm happy for the Scorpios. The North Node points into your career and legacy. So Scorpios are going to get to take off in their career and really triumphant to another level. And this ties into you trying to have a better daily life. Makes a lot of sense. You've been wanting to have a happier lifestyle. Well, the two go together. So going for your heart's dreams and career brings that happy lifestyle. Sagittarius is, this goes into what you love most, learning and travel. So the North Node is all about learning and travel for Sagittarius. This is an awesome time to travel. Travel, just stay away from the hot zones on the earth. And what this ties into is what your heart really wants. So it's quite possible that if you're not in love, you might meet that person from travel. All right. Or you might find a topic that you love uh, to study and become an expert at. So this is a time for Sag to do what they do best, teaching, travel, and learning. Capricorns, North Node in Leo means that it's time for you to really trust yourself, which like Virgos is huge when a Capricorn trusts, all right? And once you trust yourself, you can transform yourself, and this is going to lead to some mountain steady security, all right? In fact, a lot of your desire for security was that you needed to trust yourself and love yourself on a higher level. The Aquarius is, this points into your love and relationships. So a lot of Aquariuses who are single are actually going to get hooking up, be hooking up in the next 18 months, which is very rare, about every 18 years. <laughs> okay, like, so they're going to be hooking up and they're coming out of an old shell. So they're basically, their heart's going to go into certain partnerships that can also be creative partnerships too, by the way. So if you're like a mad scientist Aquarius and you find your fellow mad scientist Aquarius to have breakthroughs with, and what this leads to is your new thinking. It's a reflection of your new thinking that you've been having for a long time. Aquas have been working on basically their attitude. We have a helicopter this time. It's a very warm day here. So everyone who has a Cessna comes out flying <laughs> Orange County, California, which is cool, except if you're taping and uh, you have a lot of cement next to you. So the Aquarius has basically been working on a new attitude and this new attitude ties into a relationship. So a new communication, a new level of thinking, a new level of loving. And then finally, the Pisces. You, uh, this north node basically points to your daily reality. So your, your heart is going to light up in the moment. You're going to love what you do. You're going to be put on a path of loving what you do, loving your day-to-day -day life. And this leads directly to new values. So this looks very much like uh, promotion of job, promotion of money at the same time. So this is all positive. And I'm very happy to report this positive because it's been very trying so far this year. And now we are starting to lay down some, some gold. Like I said in my little introduction here, my only advice is I got hurt when I wasn't listening to my heart. Okay, so if you want to get ahead of this transit, listen to your heart and what it's telling you. This is not a time you're going to get away with ignoring it. All right, my friend, I'm so grateful for you. I hope you have a wonderful, blooming week. Remember, we have a fantastic club of light walkers on the internet on Facebook at namastetoday.club. All right, I'll see you in one week, my friend, or come to my daily blog at seriousjoy.tv, my audio blogcast, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But until next week, if not, remember, I love you and live, love, be.